Welcome, I am Scotty of Oric Unity. So let's go into the question of the day, or the question that I asked myself when I was at the lowest point in my life. When I started to realize that I needed to make a change, that I was unhappy with the situation I was in, that my interaction with people were not ideal, that the behaviors I engaged in were not conducive to my well-being, that the way I was thinking was deficient. The way I was feeling, well, was unhappy, discontent. But all those things led me to becoming into who I am today and to help me identify that I must begin to change and do certain habits, form certain habits, practice it every day so I may become happier. And so this is what I wish to share with you as I went along my journey. So let's go and break it down the emotions since this does relate. There's six universal basic emotions. This one I'm using from Paul Ekman. There's other schools of thought with emotions and they all are similar in how they classify these different emotions. So you go out in there and do some of your own research and, and look into the different ones if you so like. But let's use this one, the six universal basic emotions by Paul Ekman found throughout all humankind. The first emotion that you'll see is the only positive out of all the emotions is happiness, is contentment, joy. They're all the same. They're just different levels. The other five emotions are surprise. Surprise has its uses. Surprise can be good or bad or leading us to good or bad. It's more of a neutral emotion. Then there's fear, which also is another neutral emotion. It could seem negative, but the thing is when you begin to do a new thing like jump on YouTube, like I am, you may feel fearful, but in fact that fear is really could be reappraised or should be reappraised as excitement. So fear is, I see as neutral. So we have happiness, we have surprise, and we have fear. The next one is disgust. So that's number four. I don't know why I hit number five there, but four is, is disgust. Disgust is like stepping on dog boo. It's like eating something rancid and oh, start having a gag reaction. Well, that is helping us, preventing us from contracting diseases. It keeps us from things that may harm us and affect us physiologically. So that's the fourth one. The fifth one is anger. Anger is usually a negative emotion, but anger is used for when we are frustrated that something's not right in this given time, that something must change. And sometimes anger is justifiable anger, just like the civil rights movement, where anger was needed as an emotion to be able to affect change. But if you've noticed, it was done very peacefully. So the last emotion is sadness, which sadness is on the opposite side of happiness. Which side should I go here? Well, it don't matter. It's all relative. So happiness and sadness, we are attempting to put the slider towards the positive side to achieve a happier state of happiness. And hopefully my goal, our goal, your goal, mainly your goal, is to keep that equilibrium of staying content. So you may not be happy all the time, but this is developing your resiliency, developing your bounce back power to bring you back to the state of happiness, of contentment. Remember, happiness is not ecstatic joy or bliss, but it is contentment. Content with the present moment as it is, where you are and what you're doing now is leading you to the right path, to leading you to completing your goals and your objectives and your dreams. So we always want to get into that state of happiness because more positive helps us do more positive things. The first thing we must do is identify the things that make us happy and start doing more of it. And make sure when you do these happy things, it's constructive to you, constructive to yourself. 
constructive to your future, constructive to your present moment. If it's in a way destructive towards your future, towards the present moment, towards something that your future self would admonish you for, that's not the right way to be happy. I mean, go ahead if you want to, but that path leads into a spiral downward or a downward spiral. Flip flop that. Form those habits that make you happy. Go towards things that make you happy. Do those things over and over again. Prioritize what makes you happy that you must do right now, making you feel good through endorphins and things like serotonin and dopamine, getting that feel good rush. Then the next thing to do would be to ingrain these things as habit, continually doing habitual actions to make you happier. Obviously, we may become bored with these things, or you may become bored. So find something else new to do. Feel the novelty. Our, actually, our brain, the anterior cingulate, which is like in front of here in our brain somewhere. Don't quote me on this helps us feel happier in the moment. It helps us to be engaged with the environment, to be in sync with the universe and work with it. So do something new when you have feel like you're starting to get bored. Because sometimes when you're doing something new, it could lead you to different paths. So building those habits, identifying those habits, doing something new and novel, Will increase your happiness and I implore you to begin putting these into effect I'll later on go into other videos that will dive deeper into the explanation of how these benefit you into breaking it down into smaller steps but right now I'm giving you only a general overview we have to identify the habits cultivate good habits learn something new or doing something new creating uh, stimulating our brain through something novel Next one would be practicing gratitude. Identifying and realizing there is so much good that's happening in our lives. The fact that you are alive is a positive. You beat the odds. You could have been anything in this universe because we are all made of stardust and everything around us in our environment is also made of stardust. We could have been anything. We could have been a rock. We could have been a tree, which I think would have been great. But instead we became humans and I celebrate being a human. And I think it's something that you should celebrate too, that you should be grateful for, to be able to experience, to be able to feel and love, to be able to have memories, to be able to create and be a creator, change your environment, interact with different people, create new social bonds and relationships. So be grateful and list all those things out. I personally have a list of at least 10 things. I'll go into that later, but at least list about five things for you that you find that you are grateful for. Number one, being alive. Two, roof over your head. Three, being able to have a bed. Four, having food to eat. Five, having good friends. See, very simple. So identify those things and focus on, man, I have a lot going on in my life. There's not lack, but there is abundance that's happening in my life. So when you do this, you really engage with the universe, that you're giving the universe something back where I'm happy with what you are providing me. I'm content. And the universe will see that, will feel that, and will provide you more. So. Let's go on and start getting a little meta there. But the next thing would be to also practice affirmations. Well, gratitude and affirmations are in the same category. And I don't wanna to go too much into affirmations, but self-affirmations would be like, I am powerful, I am amazing, I am great. You know, those kind of affirmations. But I'll go into that another topic. So let's move on to the next one. <sighs> the next one would be to breathe, would be to meditate. So you're asking like, oh, I don't want to meditate. Well, let's go into the breathing first. First, just breathe. You don't have to meditate, breathe. We want to control our breathing in a rhythmic, controlled way. Because when we do this, in a physiological sense, we are taming our 
having control over our nervous system. Because when we start to hyperventilate, when we start to allow things to affect us, to be fearful, to be overly fearful, overly anxious, overly sad or angered, it causes stress, raises cortisol levels, makes our nervous system thinking we're under attack. Because our nervous system is, is unable to tell the difference between what you're watching on TV and what you're really experiencing in real life. I'm using a very big example there, or extreme, not extreme example, an example that may not pertain to you. But what I'm trying to say is that our nervous system is unable to register the difference really between the two. So the moment that you start to begin to control your breathing, you control how your nervous system within your body reacts. You have it to be able to calm down because with our nervous system, there's a communication between our brain and to the central nervous system. So if our central nervous system is feeling fearful, well, that's going to trigger a thought, a hormonal release affecting our thought and create a feeling, an emotion and make us behave out of character. So that's a, a good, strong example. But control your breathing. Breathe in the air and let it out. When you're angry, breathe it in and let it out. When you're feeling sad, make sure to breathe. When you are feeling fearful, breathe. Next thing that goes along that is meditating. Meditating basically helps you control and concentrate on your breath. So then when you do go about in life, with interacting with the environment, with people, with whatever situation you get yourself into, you will remember the muscle memory to breathe. And that'll be associated also with a mental memory because those connect. Remember, everything about this channel is about holistic development, about integration between mind, body, emotion, most of all, spirit and society or community or friendships however you want to do it. On this channel, I combine spirituality and science to help strengthen your spirit, self-development, holistic health. And my ultimate goal is to help motivate you into self-actualizing into your fullest potential to finding your purpose in life, your passions, to find contentment. That all being said and done, be golden in thought, emotion, and action. Be auric and be the unity.